Welcome back once again, Viper Bites Thursday Night Football, and we have a cl- no, it's not really a classic. I'm sorry, I can't even I can't even exaggerate. I can't get you that hyped. But we've got football. It's Thursday night. We've got the Jaguars. We got the Bengals. We've got a point spread that's looking at about 46, 47 points right now. We'll call it 46 and a half. We've got the Bengals favored here by about seven and a half points. We're going to break this down to you, give you some injury news to get into this game, break down some past performances by the players that you need to make sure are on your fantasy rosters. Who can you trust to start with? Who do you have to sit? Who do you who are you fading in this matchup? Give you a hint. It's probably a lot of Jaguars. Now, first off, let's head to that Jacksonville sideline here. Let's take a look at their injury report. Going into Thursday night, it's Wednesday here right now. Um, we've got James Shaughnessy, tight end, out, IR, ankle injury. Andrew Norwell, offensive guard, ankle, he's questionable. Roy Roberts, uh, Robertson Harris, he's questionable with an ankle. Trey Hernan, corner, questionable with knee. And at left tackle, Cam Robinson, he's got that shoulder injury. Those are some of the things to keep an eye on for the Jaguars. Now on the flip side, we take a look at the injury report for the Cincinnati Bengals. We see a little bit more reason to be concerned, especially on the fantasy uh, side of things. T. Higgins has been ruled out. Now he's coming off that short spell. He was out last week. Going the, from the Sunday to the Tuesday, or sorry, Sunday to the Thursday, not enough time for him to get ready. If this was a Sunday to a Sunday, maybe he, it's a different story. Maybe he's back in the lineup, but he is out for Thursday night football. Riley Reef, offensive tackle, questionable with the ankle. Xavier Suafia, questionable ankle. Uh, Trey Waynes, cornerback, questionable with the hamstring. Uh, Chidobi Awazi, corner questionable groin ricardo allen he's been ruled out ir hand jesse bates safety questionable with a neck injury we'll talk about these secondary injuries and how they could possibly help the jaguars in this matchup but first let's head over to the jacksonville sideline again let's see where we're at with the jaguars here now the jakes have lost 18 straight games dating back to last year they won week one against indianapolis and it's been loss after loss ever since now they are 1-6 against the spread over the last seven. 0-3, oh, obviously, to start the 2021 season when it comes to the spread. Coming off of three straight double-digit losses to the Texans, 16 points. The Broncos, they lost by 10. The Cardinals, they lost by 12. And there, there's a pretty good reason why the Jags are seven-point dogs here to the Bengals. And you know what? Let's probably Looking at this history here, we're talking about 16, 10, and 12. You can make an argument that the Jags should be at least a 10-point dog going into this matchup, especially on the short week. Now, Trevor Lawrence, obviously 0-3 in the covering amongst rookie quarterbacks, but all rookie quarterbacks have struggled against the spread so far. The only time a quarterback has covered that is Mac Jones, and he's only done it once. Rookie quarterbacks are 1-9 and against the spread. Now, talking about Trevor Lawrence, uh, he has been giving away the ball multiple times each and every game at least two interceptions in each of the first three games he's got seven total interceptions he's passed for over 300 just one time and that was back in week one of those seven interceptions he's only got five touchdowns to kind of uh, offset that a little bit which is not the kind of quarterback play you're expecting out of the number one overall pick last year especially when he's facing off against last year's number one overall pick joe burrow now this is going to be a great matchup to see where these two franchises are heading. What can Trevor Lawrence do? Can he keep up with Joe Burrow in this matchup? I have a feeling that we're probably going to see Trevor Lawrence throw the ball a lot more than we're going to see Joe Burrow throw. Now, when facing pressure, it's never ideal for a rookie quarterback. And Lawrence has faced his fair share this year. And to say he's struggled, maybe a bit of an underestimate. Now, his one good friend, like most quarterbacks and most teams that are bad is garbage time. You know what? We count garbage points the same as we count every other point in fantasy football. And he's been able to get his fair share early on. He's told a 20.3 fantasy points in the last two games, basically because of the garbage time. Uh, 22.1 fantasy points he got in the season opener there. He faces a Bengals secondary, however, that's only given up 16.8 fantasy points to the quarterback. That's ninth in the league. But you can kind of say what you will about that because they face the bears and they face old man ben roethlisberger and the steelers so you can put a little bit of an asterisk next to that stat line for the Bengals. head coach urban meyer is he coming is he going what's going on with urban meyer can he get this franchise turned around not so fast i can't see that happening he's designed very few run plays for trevor lawrence 
We beat up on Nagy for not doing uh, run calls for Justin Fields and RPO. Uh, Trevor Lawrence can run the ball as well. We just haven't seen that so far. They've only carried, I think, three times early on. Uh, and here's here's a stat for you. Since going way back, uh, we'll call it the merger, there's been four quarterbacks who've started the first three games and thrown two or more INTs in each of those. That's Troy Aikman, Peyton Manning, and Jim Zorn. Add Trevor Lawrence to that list as well. Just a little factoid there for you. Now, as much as we bang on Urban Meyer for not quite getting Trevor Lawrence quite settled there under center, it's taken a while to get James Robinson going there in Jacksonville. I think it's because Urban Meyer's finally, maybe, maybe, hopefully, starting to figure out how to use James Robinson going forward. Uh, first two weeks, not so much. Uh, Robinson posted 25.4 fantasy points against the Cardinals in week three. Uh, 15 carries, 88 yards, one rushing touchdown at six more receptions for 46 yards. That's going to be a key number there. Those reception totals, we'll get into that a little bit later as well. Um, there's still somehow a 60, 40 share. I think the last time we checked, it was 64, 36, I think is what the number was, uh, between Robinson and Carlos Hyde, uh, Robinson's touches though, each of the last weeks, week one, he had eight touches week two. He had 14. Last week, he had 21. This week, maybe we get 28. Maybe we've seen that progression in James Robinson's game. Now, the Bengals only are giving up 58 rushing yards per game, which is the eighth fewest. But, and here's a big but, they are giving up points in bunches in the passing game. Look at what Najee Harris did last week. That's probably because Ben Roethlisberger can't throw more than 10 yards down the field. But Najee Harris had 14 receptions for 102 receiving yards. And then if you take a look back when they played uh, the Minnesota Vikings, the Bengals surrendered six more receptions for 43 yards to Delvin Cook. So we can see that we're getting some production out of running backs, but it's coming in the passing game, not necessarily in the run game. Now, as our, my good friend there, Wes Huber over at Fancy Points kind of pointed out, Robinson may be even better this year than he was last year. If you look at that elusive rate, his elusive rating, it's about 43%. That's a huge increase from last year, and his yards per route run is nearly 10% higher. Um, and this is seeing with a 31% backfield shared week one, he still ranks 15th overall with a 55.4 per, uh, share percentage. And like I mentioned, he did have six catches for 46 yards. Why is that important? Because we know the Bengals give up passing yards to running backs. Now, in the passing game, looking at what the Jags can do here, Trevor Lawrence has been leaning heavily on Marvin Jones. There's no doubt about it. Marvin Jones has been his number one target. Uh, even though Lawrence has been a little inconsistent at times, Marvin Jones has been the consistent factor in this offense. Eight plus catches, five, or eight plus targets, five plus catches, 55 plus yards, and 12 plus fantasy points in each of these first three games. That's with the rookie quarterback under center. Now, six different wide receivers have reached double digit fantasy points against the Bengals early going. And we mentioned these injuries to the likes of Jesse Bates, Trey Waynes, uh, Awazi there. All these injuries could ultimately lead to a heavyweight showdown of Marvin Jones versus Eli Apple as Apple is the next man up. And we know Apple from back in uh, his New York giants days Advantage, Marvin Jones. Let's be honest here. Apple is 36 in target passer rating here. Uh, they've given up the most. Cincinnati has given up more fantasy points per game out of the slot, 10th most compared to outside at 17. They're ranked 17th at those. Uh, Jones has been primarily used in the slot, and that's where he scored one of his two TDs. So expect to see Marvin Jones lining up in the slot, getting a little bit of an advantage there because he has been the most consistent factor. We know Chanel is going to play a little bit in the slot too, but I really like Marvin Jones moving around and getting opportunities to play everywhere. Now, DJ Chark, another wide receiver here, completely un unpredictable, up and down, up and down. Three games, two touchdowns. He has been that deep ball threat for the Jaguars. You look at that A dot, that average depth of target, that's at 17.1. And then at his yards per route run, that's at 22 yards. Now, the Bengals have given up, like I mentioned, the 10th most uh, yards per game at 182 wide receivers through three weeks. DJ Chark is actually tied for the league league with Devontae Adams in targets of 15 with 15 of 
sorry, let me let me bring this back here. I don't want to reset my video here. He's tied with Devontae Adams and targets uh, 15 or more air yards. He's got 12 of those. So they're looking for him deep. Unfortunately for him, <laughs> a lot of them have been uncatchable, and he's only been able to get in five of those. Now, we mentioned that slot again. We want to believe LaVisca Chanel is that guy. He's probably not your safest bet. Now, you look at his numbers through week one, week two, week three. He has yet to post more than 50 yards receiving. He has 13 catches for 95 yards. That's 7.3 yards per reception early on. Last week, Juju Smith-Schuster managed three catches for 25 yards on 40% of the snaps against the Bengals last week. So that just kind of gives you a little rundown what to expect from the Jags against this Bengals defense. Now, when we flip the script here and we start talking about uh, – Oh, I just lost my notes here. Oh, boy, where we go? I got a little bit of a cough there, but we'll get it figured out here in a second. Uh, we talk about the Bengals. We talk about T. Higgins. He's already out. The Bengals are 6-2 and two against the spread in their last eight home games. Cincinnati is 7-3-1 and one towards unders in the last 11. So you kind of look at that here. Now, the biggest question for the Bengals before the season was the offensive line. After three weeks, it's still the offensive line. Um, <laughs> Joe Burrow and his old line has that a rare distinction of allowing the third highest sack rate while also limiting defenses to lowest QB pressure rate. Yes, the Steelers didn't have TJ Watt last week, so they weren't quite running at 100%, but they still the Steelers still managed to get to Burrow twice, and this is going to be a problem for the Bengals all season long, making sure Joe Burrow has time to throw the ball. Now he ranks about 23rd in the league right now with 16.8 fantasy points per game, but he ranks six best when you look at his fantasy points per drop back. So the Bengals are being smart. They're managing how Burrow plays behind center. They know that this offensive line is a little bit weak. So they're limiting his drop backs, limiting the opportunities to get hit because when he does drop back, he's getting hit. It's really that simple. If we want to look at how this all, what this actually means, and he's 15th, the 14, 15th, sorry, he's 15th with a 15.2 pure passing fantasy points per game. Now, only Jameis Winston, 24, averages fewer opportunities than Joe Burrow. Now, we look at, at uh, the passing plus the rushing attempts. Uh, Burrow, I think, is at 26. Now, this is probably because the way that this offense is wired. Um, you look at there, they have the second lowest pace of play. They're getting about 55 plays per game, and they're handing the ball off at an alarm at a 48.2% clip. That is good news for Joe Bur uh, Joe Mixon, especially in this matchup. Now we're going to talk about what Joe Mixon's been doing. He has an impressive, like I mean, impressive. You can't get much better than this. Well, you can because there's one that's better, but he is has the second highest carry share amongst all running backs at 84.8 percent that means it's his backfield in the run game now he also ranks second with 24.7 touches per game now we were all expecting a big uptick uptick there for joe mixon in the passing game once geo bernard left we aren't seeing that he's getting about 2.3 targets per game that's a 9.6 per uh target percentage there and he's only got one touchdown on two carries inside the five yard line now the jags defense they've been pretty solid against the run they've surrendered the seventh fewest yards per carry but they've also given up the third most rushing touchdowns on the flip side so really kind of a bizarre they're not giving it up but teams are moving the ball on the field on down the field on them getting down low and they're scoring. It's really that it's how this has been breaking down for the Jags, unfortunately. Now, when we take a look at what Joe Mixon's doing, we add this uh, dating back to last year. Mixon has seen at least 19 opportunities. That's carries and targets in nine straight games, averaging 24.3 per game. Now for reference, Delvin Cook averages 24.4 opportunities per game since 2019. So Mixon's right there with Delvin Cook when it comes to opportunities. It's just about cashing in on them. Now, the problem is, He's facing that lack of touchdown upside. We've talked about he's not getting those carries in the five-yard line. He's not getting targets in the passing game, which is really killing that value for our mirror. So if we could take a look at this, we get Mixon going in there. And here's a little reference point. Last time Mixon faced the Jags, 
He had 31 touches, 181 yards, three touchdowns for 42 fantasy points. So we'll put that on your radar heading into this Thursday night matchup. I think we're going to see a lot of Joe Mixon. In the receiving game, it's been basically Jamar Chase, Joe Burrow, going back to LSU, making that connection. This has been the most consistent factor in the passing game. Jamar Chase, 11 receptions, 220 yards, four touchdowns to start his career. That's including that two-touchdown performance against the Steelers last week, which Bengals fans, who day they know who they want. They got it against the Steelers. That may be the best part of their season right there, putting a hurt down on the Steelers. Now, with that, he only had four receptions on five targets, 65 yards with those two touchdowns. But Burrow only threw the ball 18 times. We talked about how they're limiting his drops and uh, Burrow's dropbacks and uh, opportunities to get hit. They've limited that. 18 passing attempts. I would expect that to be very similar there as they really lean heavily on the run game. Now, we just watched the Jags trade C.J. Henderson to Carolina. They brought in Dan Arnold for a pass catching option, I guess, if you want to call it that, at the tight end position for the Jags. So out is C.J. Henderson. We know Herndon's a little bit banged up. Look for uh, Jamar Chase to draw the attention of Tyson Campbell. A little bit of an old LSU, a little bit of Georgia Bulldog uh, battle here going on on Thursday Night Football. And again, advantage, Chase. Uh, Campbell has yielded 14 receptions, 187 yards, and one touchdown. He's giving up 12.9 fantasy points per game. That is insane. Now with Jamar Chase... He is scoring points at a unprecedented level, I guess is the best way to put it. Going back to 2000, when you look at all rookies in the first three games, Anquan Bolin scored 70.8 fantasy points. Roy Williams, 68.8. Terry McLaren, 59.7. Calvin Ridley, 57.2. And then there's Jamar Chase coming in there at 56.8 so far through three games. He's also just one of five receivers to start his career with four touchdowns in the first three games. Now, we know Tig Higgins. He sat out last week with a shoulder injury. We talked about the short turnaround for him to be back there. He is out. Now, I just want to touch base on T. Higgins because if, for whatever reason, someone's dropped him because now this is going to be the second game he's missed, I don't know why anyone would drop him. Obviously, he's not going to be a factor in this matchup, but if you look at him, it's been difficult. Like We go back to week one, four for 58 and a touchdown. In week two, the connection was there a little bit more, six for 60 and a touchdown. He had the 10 targets. You know what? Without... T. Higgins, maybe Mike Thomas gets a little bit of run. Maybe Auden Tate gets a little bit of run. Last week, they each have one reception. They combined for 33 yards. Now, the one player who benefits maybe the most of T. Higgins being out once again is Tyler Boyd. He bounced back. He had a 13-plus fantasy points. He got a big target share, 30% in the last two weeks. Uh, and he draws, being that slot receiver for the Bengals, he draws corner Chris Claybooks, who's allowed six targets all to be completed for 72 yards against the Cards last week. And Boyd did score. He had six targets with Higgins out. So that's something to kind of keep an eye on right now. I'm not too big on Tyler Boyd here, but the matchup is really good. you got a guy who's catching passes, getting more involved in the offense, and you've got a guy who's giving up passes. So, you know, advantage Tyler Boyd, advantage Jamar Chase on these one-on-one -on -one matchups. What to expect? It's pretty easy. Through three games, the Bengals have gone – 57.9, pass heavy in the first three quarters. And then when the, that's if the game's within one score, that's 22nd in the league. Last year, the Bengals were 62.2%. And we, we're seeing a bit of a change now. When we get to the fourth quarter now, it's a flip of the script. The Bengals are 63.3% run heavy with that lead. So the fourth quarter, and we know we have a feeling that the Bengals are going to be in the lead in the fourth quarter, so expect a lot of run, a lot of Joe Mixon. We're going to see a lot of Mixon late scoring, whatever it is. I don't expect this game to be really close. I'll give you my prediction here in a, momentarily, but I would expect the Bengals to be handing the ball off plenty of times in the fourth quarter, and I wouldn't expect Joe Burrow to throw more than 25 times. In fact, if he throws more than 20, I would be shocked when it comes down to it. I'm expecting the Bengals to win this game 30-17. to 17. That means they're going to... Just get the points. I think the points are 46 and a half. So we get 47 points here. Easily covering the seven and a half point spread. The Jags keep their losing streak going. The Jags keep this uh, losing by double digits each week thing going. Uh, for your fantasy rosters, Joe Burrow, start him at your own risk. I'm not putting him in. 
he he could be a serviceable QB too, but I would leave him alone because I don't think he's going to have the opportunity to throw the ball a whole lot based on how this game script is going to go. Mixon, RB1. He's going to be top six when it's all said and done for running backs this week. You know he's going to get a little bit involved in the passing game, probably two, three targets there. He's going to get a good share in the run game. Expect about another 85% uh, carry rate there for him. Uh, obviously, Higgins is out. Tyler Boyd kind of slides into a wide receiver two, wide receiver three kind of range with some upside for a touchdown. And Jamar Chase, you're still starting him as a wide receiver one. He's in the top 12 right now in scoring. you got to get him in your lineup any way you can. On the Jaguar side, I don't feel comfortable starting many people. Chano, I'm not starting. I'm not comfortable there. Uh, I'm not comfortable starting DJ Chark. He's been too up and down. If you need a home run play, but it's Thursday night, so you shouldn't need that play right now. Trevor Lawrence, can't trust him. Too many turnovers, not enough touchdowns to back that up and no run, rushing upside thus far this season. But I do feel comfortable starting J uh, James Robinson. I think he's a guy you can get with a, a RB2 type week. I think he's going to come in. I think Urban Meyer is finally using him properly. And like I said, you can pass the ball as a in the run game as an extension of the run game against the Bengals. So I expect uh, Robinson to be heavily involved here. Um, he was heavily involved against the Cardinals. I think he's going to get even more receptions. I wouldn't be surprised if he had eight or nine receptions in this game for about 80 yards, tack on another 80 yards rushing. I think he's going to be right up there in the top 12 running backs this week. And then Marvin Jones. I, I don't bet against Marvin Jones. You can't bet against Marvin Jones. He's clearly in that wide receiver three category. You know you're going to get at least five catches, probably six catches, eight plus targets. You're going to get about 60 to 70 yards on him. Probably a touchdown because I have the Jags predicted here to get at least 17 points. That's two touchdowns. Give one to Robinson, give one to Jones. We'll call it a day when it's all said and done. And that's kind of the breakdown here. Thursday night football, Jags, Bengals. As always, a lot of my stats are coming from Fantasy Points. So go over there right now, get that subscription. Use 21 Vipers 10 as a code, get 10% off. Make sure you're checking out the ViperCast every Tuesday at 10 p.m. Eastern. We're bringing you the latest and greatest and every preview and breakdown you can imagine. Start, sits, waiver wires. We got you covered. With that all said, we'll see you on Sunday. We got a little bit special Sunday night football, a little, ooh, a little football in a movie type thing. We got the we got the Bucks, we got the Patriots, we got our homecoming, so to speak. Maybe a little ego involved. Hint, hint, wink, wink. There's a little uh foreshadowing to the movie we may be covering anyway make sure you catch out this vi uh the sunday night video the monday night video make sure you go back and check the videos of the past because you know we can always learn a little bit of something here there's always a little bit of stats a little bit of uh tidbits here that are going to help you become a better fantasy analyst a better fantasy player and a better fan of the game so with that all said this is the viper bites catch you next time